welcome to On a Roll, the podcast that bakes up a variety of topics. Uh, I'm your host, Kerwin Brown, and this morning we have Wendy Ebbing joining morning. us. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Thanks for being a part of this. Um, we start uh, our podcast with some kind of quick fire questions okay. to sort of warm us up a little bit, and they're mostly baking related. So uh, we'll say, uh, just tell me your favorite. So tacos or burritos? Burritos. And I know those aren't really baked goods, but I'm cheating. That's uh, okay. Uh, baguettes or croissants? Croissants. Okay. Uh, sheet cake or bunt cakes? Ooh, bunt cake. I know. I'm really got. I just love the yeah. the bunt cakes. Yeah. And the texture. The and texture the, yeah. and yeah, I'm I'm a bunt cake uh, craze. Uh, wheat bread or white bread? Wheat bread. Okay. And then what would you have on your? Wheat bread, are you an avocado, must, whatever? Yeah, so right now, big thing is um, peanut butter okay. and honey. So okay. I have some naturally grown honey from our area. To yeah. So, yeah. I like that, like that. And then donut or cinnamon roll? Cinnamon roll. Okay. Uh, and then you get to travel. We're going to talk a little international mm -hmm. later, but you get to travel and have traveled a lot all over the world. Uh, any favorite good, baked good? Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if it's a yeast product, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not baked, uh, it's fermented, but um, now I would say I really love the international breads. Okay. I mean, you know, in right. Germany, um, you know, and they have great breads that you get with right. the brats, and of right. course it all goes down great with a beer as well. With a well, beer, so, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> said that you uh, don't mind the, uh, the uh, German beer no, when you're I over there. No, I don't mind at all. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were telling a quick story, warming up about... Uh, back in the day, Dusseldorf and the alt beer, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, it used to be one euro. And yeah. so, you know, you flipped a euro on a tray, and you know, those women yeah. were walking around, and, and you took a beer, and it was, yeah. I thought, the best, the best exchange you could have. Yeah, you know, a little coin, and I got a beer. Right. So yeah. yeah so uh, and, uh, yeah, definitely enjoy the uh, the alt beer. Yeah. I even have a nickname from one of my coworkers after a night of drinking alt beers. Um, of course, keeping in mind they're small. They're very small. Yes, yeah. yes. But I, I earned the nickname Ocho. Ocho. For, <laughs> for eight. For eight so, little beers, yes. So, well, I'm glad you, I'm sure you well deserved and <laughs> earned. So, uh, we're going to dive into the, we, we really like to talk about path to baking mm -hmm. uh, here. And, uh, you know, I think almost everybody has, a, it's, it's amazing the unique path. So, uh, you, when you're going off to college, uh, mm -hmm. you probably didn't say, I'm dreaming of being, a, <laughs> you know, a, a marketing person in the baking industry. So, if you even knew what the baking industry really yeah, was. Right. So, uh, so, tell us a little bit about your path. Yeah. So. So I actually went to college um, for an environmental science degree with a minor in chemistry and graduated with a 40 hour degree or 40 hour certification in OSHA. Okay. So I, my first job in the baking industry was actually um, doing safety for a company that manufactures mixers. Okay. And I loved the company right. and um, loved the industry right. and I was so I was marketing basically safety right. to a bunch of um, <laughs> young and middle-aged men in a manufacturing <laughs> plant and a marketing position came open within the company right. and I had also decided to go back and get my MBA okay. so I told the uh, two gentlemen that were doing the interviews if I can market <laughs> safety to young and middle-aged men, I might be able to market mixers as you well. Might, so. You might be able to sell a mixer too. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, a little bit of then, you know, you, you had that, you got your MBA, yeah. then kind of why'd you stay? Well, a couple things. Um, number one, I loved the industry. I loved right. the people I worked with. Um, I actually had a short sabbatical from the baking industry, which made me realize even more huh. how much I love it. Right. Um, I had a son and he was premature and think life was just a little overwhelming and right. I was driving a little far to work. And so I took a job with a regional insurance carrier as their okay. communications manager. And after 18 months of that, I definitely wanted back in the baking industry. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we a lot of us joke. Um, right. I've worked with some people for over 20 years right. in the industry, and we're like, once you get the flour in your blood, you yeah. can't get it out. And it's just a very unique industry. I've always been a family-oriented person, right. and the industry is just family-oriented right. and, you know, great relationships. So I, I love that. Yeah. You, uh, uh, I'm going to add one little deal here. You have a little bit of a commute. 
to your current I job. I do, yeah. So it's almost like two hours, hour and a half? It's almost an hour and a half, about an hour and 20 minutes, okay. unless I get stuck behind school buses or tractors. Yeah. But, yeah. So what do you do in that hour and a half or whatever? You, do you podcast or what? I do, podcast yeah. or um, phone calls. Okay. So depending on, you know, if I have a cell signal or not, going right. through the uh, the cornfields and stuff. Yeah. But um, So I do podcasts, right. um, some marketing podcasts, some right. baking industry podcasts, so. um, some Bible podcasts. Yeah. So yeah, so. I do a lot of a wide variety awesome. of, of things. Um, I, uh, I've known you for a long, long time and seen your work for a long time. And I, you know, thinking of this, I came up with the word brand builder. Mm -hmm. I think you're a brand builder. Mm -hmm. You've taken two companies in, you know, your career here in the industry and you know, they were old established companies that were probably the logo and the brands mm -hmm. were a little dated. Mm -hmm. And you were able to really transform that new look, new all that. Maybe what gave you that skill to do that or some of the challenges of that or uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I mean, I think as far as skill goes, I think the one thing about marketing I've always said is your no matter what you're marketing, you're marketing to people mm. and making it something that people can understand and that people can relate with and that's a message that resonates with them. Right. And I think as far as taking, you know, um, like the Bundy brands and bringing them all together, it was about, you know, we're a family of right. companies and making that message strong with the same logo, the same colors, the same, right. you know, the same professional level of, vis you know, of visual materials right. and, and everything like that. So it's really elevating everything together so that everyone associates one with the other. Right. Um, and so that's, you know, as far as skills, I think it was just... I don't know, understanding people right. and, and what, what would make sense to me will, hope, you know, will make sense to others. And you really were able, both of the companies probably had a lot of disjointed sort of things yeah. and brands and now they look like yeah. there's the unity and there, which yeah. is it's really nice. It so. is. And I think it also brings the people of the company together. Right. Um, because what I've found is, you know, while we call ourselves, you know, Bundy Baking Solutions, right. there are still those people within the company that still identify themselves as American Pan. Right. And those that are Pan Glow. Right. And those that are Sonova. Yeah. And so it's even an internal thing. And right. we've, um, within the last couple of years, come up with our core values or what we call our creed. And right. I think, again, that's something that's really helped to tie everyone together so that we're all moving towards the same goal yeah. for our customers. I like that. Uh, a lot of international experience. You build mm -hmm. booths all over the world. Yeah. So any kind of crazy challenges with, I got, you know, oh. through the pandemic or other times or whatever, you're you're building something a long ways from, yeah. from Ohio. So yeah. tell yeah. us a little bit about that. It's yeah, it can be really interesting, and especially I haven't always gone to every trade show. Right. So I can be working with a manager or a production person who's setting up a booth in Dubai, right. um, which is probably eight or nine hours time difference. Right. And I'm coordinating with them from Ohio, and we're taking pictures through WhatsApp, and we're right. you know, and there's language barriers. Right. And um, but honestly, the biggest thing that I found is if you find a good partner mm. and they start to understand the brand and the company and the expectations and you work closely together, right. it makes everything much more seamless. Right. So we have a company we've worked with for several years at multiple international trade shows, um, but there still are so funny story, there still are those things. Um, don't ever completely trust Google Translate because um, we had translated, so for one of the international shows, we wanted to put welcome right. in multiple languages. And when we got to the show, and this was in Dubai, the um, translator, the you know, the hostess the, and um, translator that we had said, yeah, that's not how you say welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, y you need to change that. So, right. I mean, so those things, it's right. just, you know, it can be very interesting. You need to change that now. Yes. You're going to offend yes. a bunch of people. Yes. So, uh, uh, worst best whatever maybe worst let's say worst job you've ever had what talk yeah, about that yeah yeah um, well like a lot of people college the jobs you had throughout college aren't always your greatest jobs um, and since I was in environmental science I was looking for something that was kind of related to the environment and right. and so <laughs> I was cleaning the environment one summer with by walking the um, 
the roads in my county right. in Ohio and cleaning the ditches with a bunch of juvenile delinquents. That's nice, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I got lots of exercise that summer, <laughs> learned to exercise patience as well and communicate with you know teenage kids right. that weren't thrilled to be there because yeah. they had gotten in trouble and this was part of their and punishment. Their work post, um, yeah. But honestly, you know, a lot of, they were really good kids. For the right. most part, there were a few that, yeah, I was happy when their time was up. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Part of the podcast, I like to eat, uh, bake yeah. good. So okay. we're here in the South. We're going to have some biscuits, which are very Southern. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask you a question, tell a quick story. Biscuits, we're going to have mm -hmm. biscuits today. Biscuits were definitely part of my growing up. You know, mm -hmm. if I, I think about to my earliest something that felt warm and fuzzy in family, yeah. it was biscuits. My dad mm -hmm. made biscuits most mornings. He'd make, you know, we either have honey or something, and mostly we had his gravy. He yeah. had this famous yeah. gravy, and so that's sort of my growing up. So mm -hmm. we're going to try okay. a bite, and okay. we have a couple of things we can put on them, but do you have an earliest sort of baked good memory of kind of family or whatever? So. You know, I think um, one of my biggest memories of baked goods, now my family were all bakers, so oh. there was always cake, cookies, things like that. But I think um, one of my favorites is my grandma is known throughout the county for her pies. Oh. So she made pies from scratch with lard and um, her berry pies. Way. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, and with no measuring cups or anything, yeah. she just did it to feel. And so that's that's one of my favorite memories. And my grandma's still alive. She's 90, she'll be 96 this year. Oh wow. So yeah, we still try to make pies, but yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so funny when you bake with, I used to bake with, with an amp. And I got a recipe, and literally the recipe said, fill the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. And you're like, what is that? I mean, yeah. you know, it's that. So it's that mm -hmm. grab a handful and this Yeah, and that my grandma had a coffee cup that she right. used. Yeah. yeah. So that's, This is really good. This honey that mm -hmm. has the honeycomb in it is pretty wonderful. Yeah. Oh. Uh, mm. um, I could eat a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. um, Best thing about the working in the industry, you said a little bit, but just, mm -hmm. you know, bring that home. Like, what's the best thing about working in our industry? Hands down the people. And I think that's, you know, I talk about it a lot with millennials and, you know, everyone's right. looking for that feeling of um, doing something important. And mm -hmm. I just, of course, that idea of the baking industry and how central it is to everyone's home, everyone's mm -hmm. family. Um, everyone's livelihood is right. fantastic, but then to be able to share that goal mm -hmm. with a bunch of really phenomenal people that have right. the same passion and the same values, and right. anyway, so I would definitely that. It's so fun because you know when you tell people, you know, what do you do? You know, meet, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. You're like in the baking industry. They they always like kind of light up. They're like, yeah. Well, often they ask if I'm a baker, and then yeah. I tell them no. Right. Um, so I can warm up stuff, but uh, but it also is just this. People have a story or yeah, they're relating, yeah, and yep. so that's really fun. Yeah. Um, if you could go back and talk to your 18-year-old self, um, mm -hmm. what would you tell your 18-year-old self, uh, you know, about the industry or about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, advice, I guess? Yeah. I think just be patient, and <laughs> opportunities will, will come up, and if right. you do the right things, you work hard, right. um, learn as much as you can, right. you know, network with as many people as you can, All along and, the way. Yeah, and opportunities come up, and right. you find your passion, right. and, and what you really enjoy doing. Right. Um, to tell an 18-year-old, yep, you know exactly what you want to do now, and do that for the rest of your life, right. I think is, you know, just not realistic, right. and there's, throughout life, you meet different people, and do different things that you never even thought of, like the right. baking industry, right. and you find a passion, and right. so yeah, be patient, learn as much as you can, and, and meet as many people as possible. Well, you guys have a few kids in the house that you're beginning to yeah. launch and about yeah. to launch. And yeah. So uh, do, they, do they have any interest in, in, our, in the industry or? Um, I wouldn't say specifically, but my one son is going to be an electrical engineer. Right. So, you know, I think that um, if the opportunity came up, I would introduce him to, <laughs> you know, a bakery where maybe he could yeah. do an internship or something that was close. Um, my second son is, um, as of right now, more interested in rock and roll and construction. Right. Um, but, you know, you never know where things will take you. So right. I think that's, again, just tell them to be open. You know right. what you like right now, but that can change as you find different opportunities. Right. Um, sort of... You know, kind of, you know, I look at your, what you've done over the years that you've been here and uh, the mark that you've left. Is there, you know, if you said, I'd like to leave X as the, my legacy, you know, in the industry, kind of what would you, what would you say to that? Wow. That is a very interesting question. Huh, okay. Um, 
I would just, I, you know, as a legacy, I see it more as just a whole human being. Oh. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, I, I don't necessarily see it as a mark on an industry or a, you know, I see it as a mark on people. I uh -huh. want people to remember me. Right. I, when people say, oh, did you know Wendy? I want them to say, oh, yeah, she was great. Yeah, she was she, nice. She, you, or, you know, what, you know, whatever the, right. the adjectives she, are they she choose. She helped but me or yes. she gave me a chance. Yes. Or, well, you know, and that's, I, I think yeah. that's a great one is that, right. um, you know, just being able to, to help people, being open to always saying yes. Right. Um, if, if asked to do something, right. you know, within reason, of course. But, um, yeah, being helpful, being involved, right. you know, those types of things. And you're certainly, you know, you, I don't know if it's somebody at your company that said you better get involved, but you've been on yeah. various boards and yep. program committees and, you know, yeah. all those kind of things yeah. at a variety of, of, of organizations. So did somebody encourage that or did you just kind of get that naturally of like being a volunteer? Um, I think some of it's natural. Right. I did, it did take a little push initially, but once right. I got started, um, and that would be Terry Barch. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Said, uh, yeah. Let's get out he of there. Yeah. Wendy, you should go do this. And, <laughs> um, actually even Paul Latan was right. another one that I remember when I was nominated to the ASB board back in 2015, um, I got this email that said, welcome to the board of directors. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm happy to do this, but I didn't even know I was nominated. Um, so so that was kind of, you know, so yeah. getting involved and, in, in, uh, you know, doing presentations at ASB and, right. yes, yeah, so there was some nudging, but once I did it, I really enjoyed it, it and, yeah, 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 so. yeah. All right. So I think that's a wrap. So uh, thanks for being a part. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on On the Roll. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.